Hello and welcome back to The Wargamer and in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can paint your bolt action French infantry using the Army Painter range of paints to do so. The first task in painting your miniature is to prime it and I've used the Army Painter's Leather Brown Spray Primer for this. This makes the most sense because the majority of the miniature is going to be leather brown so if we can just get the first few base coats down quickly it saves a lot of time. If you don't have access to the leather brown spray paint, you could instead use a regular primer and then just brush paint the leather brown over the top. Once we have the base coat achieved, we now want to apply a wash of military shader over the great coat and the trousers. This will give the coat and the trousers a slightly greenish brown coloring. It will also flow into those recesses and help to bring out some of the details. Once our military shader wash has dried, the next step is to highlight both the great coat and the trousers using Monster Brown. Now to highlight, I'd recommend creating a mixture of one part paint to one part water using a small amount of paint on the tip of your brush and lightly dragging it along the edges and raised sections of the cloth. This will create a lighter edge, which gives the effect of light reflecting off these surfaces and it will also enhance the detail of these areas as well. In addition to the highlight, I'll also be using the Monster Brown to base coat some of the equipment that the French infantryman is carrying. When painting these areas though, I would recommend leaving the trim and the straps the darker leather brown. In this next step, I'll now be washing over the areas I painted with the Monster Brown in the previous step, such as the bags and the putties, with soft tone ink. This wash will pull into those recesses and really help to bring out the detailing in these areas. For this step, I would recommend watering down your ink to roughly one part ink to one part water, as applying it straight out of the pot may be a little bit overpowering. To finish off painting our bags and putties, we now want to highlight the very edges of these areas using Banshee Brown. As with the rest of the highlights, I would recommend using a small amount of paint on the very tip of your brush and this will give you the best control over getting those fine edge lines. In this next step, I'll now be painting the leather pouches and straps on our French infantrymen and for this, we want to use a base coat of dirt spatter. To finish off painting our leather straps and pouches, the next step is to highlight them using fur brown. In addition to highlighting the pouches, I'll also be using the fur brown to base coat the wooden furniture of the rifle. This base coat will give us an excellent starting off point for the reddish brown stained wood. Continuing with the wooden parts of the rifle, I'll now be applying a wash of light tone ink to these areas. The reddish brown colouring of this wash will help us to achieve the stained wood effect that we're looking for in this rifle. The final step in painting the wooden areas of the rifle is to apply a very thin edge highlight of troll claws to these areas. With the rifle completed, I'll now be painting the boots and also any metal areas on the miniature with a base coat of matte black. Many of these areas can be quite tricky to reach, so make sure you use a small amount of paint on the tip of your brush and also water down that paint slightly as well. Roughly two parts paint to one part water should suffice. This will improve the flow of the paint and give you much more control when applying it with your brush. In this next step, I'll now be applying a highlight of Dungeon Grey to just the boots. This will give a slightly shiny effect to these areas and give the effect that light is reflecting off them. The next area of the miniature that I'll be tackling will be the skin areas. We want to start off with a base coat of cobalt skin. Now when painting the skin areas, be careful not to overspill onto the areas we've already painted as there are quite a few of them now. So just take your time and make sure you thin down your paint to roughly one part paint to one part water and apply those coats in at least two thin layers to give the best coverage possible. To give some definition to the skin and also darken down the color slightly, I'll now be applying a flush wash over all of these areas. The next step in painting our skin areas is to use cobalt skin once again but this time we'll just be using it as a highlight to pick out some more prominent facial features such as the bridge of the nose and also the cheekbones. We'll also be using it to pick out things like knuckles and individual fingers as well. With the skin completed, we can now begin work on painting the helmet. I want to apply a nice dark green colouring here, so for this I'm going to be applying a base coat of Crypt Wraith. To further darken down the colouring of the helmet and also apply a little bit more definition, I'll now be applying a green tone ink wash over the helmet. The very final step in painting the helmet is to highlight the ridge on the top of the helmet, the crest at the front and also the trim as well. For all this, we'll be using Venom Worm. The final step in painting our French infantryman is to highlight the metal areas we painted black in the previous step using Gun Metal. This combination of a black base coat and a Gun Metal highlight will give the effect of blackened steel. And here we have the completed French infantryman. Now I've applied a layer of anti-shine varnish to the surface of the miniature just to remove some of that shine and I've also based it as well. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please do let me know in the comments below along with your suggestions for other bolt action or World War II miniatures you would like to see me tackle in future tutorials. 
To be kept up to date with all the projects that I'm currently working on, do be sure to check out both my Facebook and Instagram pages, which you can find links to in the description below. And also make sure you subscribe to be kept up to date with my latest videos. To finish off this video, I just want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. It's you guys who make these videos possible by pledging your support each month, and if you're interested in doing the same, you can do so by checking out the link in the description below. From there, you'll be taken to my Patreon page where you can donate from as little as a dollar a month, which will just really help me in producing future content. So the only thing that's left to say is thanks for watching, and goodbye.